So what do you do when you realize that you don't even know where all of your implements are because you have so many of them? You Marie Kondo your implement stash. Step one, put it in a giant pile. <laughs> That's a lot. So I think I'm going to go through and sort these in categories and out of things that I know I'm definitely going to keep and know I'm definitely going to get rid of. <laughs> first step in recovery is admitting that you have a problem. But I don't think this is a problem. All right, let's Marie Kondo this shit. Where to even begin? Begin by not getting my mic tangled up in everything. All right, so this is my collection and uh, Stephen Lewis's collection as well. Let's be realistic here. It's 90% my collection. I don't want to blame him for what's happening here. Um, <laughs> this is 12 years of collecting. I have done a cull before. I have gotten rid of things before, which might be the saddest part of all of this. And also I know this is not everything because I can see some things that are missing. My London Tanner's leather paddle is missing. Oh no, I might have sold it. You've definitely got a problem if you can't remember what the things you sold and what things you haven't. I might have a problem apparently if I can't remember <laughs> whether or not I sold something or kept it. I don't know where it is. Okay, fair. Fair. Um... Where should we start? How, to, should I, how should I do this video, Daddy? Okay, Daddy, just help me figure out how we're gonna do this. We're gonna go this section by section. I will tell you what it is that I am looking for and wanting to keep or get rid of in each section. And if there's interesting stories or things to fund as things to share, I will stop and tell you about my favorites and maybe about the ones I'm getting rid of as well. So they are right in front of me. So we are gonna start with OTK paddles. So OTK paddles, what I am looking for here, by the way, what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to keep almost all of this because the criteria is, does it bring you joy? And most implements bring me a tremendous amount of joy. Uh, also, they're usually very useful. The ones I'm getting rid of, I will probably donate most of them to the TASP auction. 
Um, so that is the silent auction we do each year at TASP, which benefits uh, charity, usually the American Cancer Society, but also we've done some other charities as well. And um, so you can buy them, I guess, uh, for charity. I think that's going to be... Oh yeah, you can bid for them. So it's a silent auction. So that's where all of my other implements that I have gotten rid of in the past have gone. So I'm pretty sure that is where the ones that we decide to get rid of will go as well. So what I'm looking for in an OTK paddle is kind of what I'm going to be looking for with every paddle or every implement here is, uh, do I use it? And is it good? And if it's not one of those things, so it's basically, do I use it? If I use it, I'll keep it. Is it really high quality um, and something I would hypothetically use, in which case I'll probably keep it, uh, or does it have sentimental value for some reason, in which case I will probably keep it, but might not. I'm gonna be getting rid of probably a lot of novelty things as well as some things that just don't work for us. All right, <laughs> this is my very unprofessional, not great setup, but let's get going. I don't think I'm getting rid of any of these. <laughs> okay, so in this category, uh, we have a lot that fall under the, um, I just really love this one category. I actually can't find my spoon brush, so the spoon paddle has made it into a different pile. My piling wasn't even very great. Um, but so I've got a few different, oh, there it is. This is my favorite paddle, as I've talked about. Definitely would never get rid of this. This is Miss Rose. Um, this is another Miss Rose paddle. It is Kingwood. It is spectacularly beautiful. The wood on this guy is absolutely spectacular. Everything Miss Rose does is absolutely spectacular. I could never get rid of this. I don't actually use it that often, if I'm being honest, but it's possibly like the prettiest thing in my collection, so could never get rid of it. Um, I feel similarly about these two. So these are actually both by Miss Kitty. Um, so Miss Kitty, the wonderful um, partner of DJ Bob, some of you may know, um, used to make paddles. She is retired and no longer making them, and I am lucky enough to have two of her pieces. This one is incredibly different. It is unique to my collection. Both of these are unique to my collection. This one is so incredibly thin and lightweight, and as a result, it is pure sting, and it is super beautiful. And this one is great for sit spots, unsurprisingly. So keeping both of these. I've also definitely not been taking care of my paddles because I've been bumping up into other things and I can tell. This um, was by a wonderful vendor in Texas. Um, I love this one, it's super light and therefore different. So I will be keeping that one. This one is actually not mine. It is uh, Vix and I have sentimental attachment to it, so it stays. Um, this is my new beauty. I absolutely love this guy. Um, cannot remember the name of the maker, but I will figure it out and I will put it on the screen somewhere. Um, got this at the vendor fair in Texas. I adore it. It's a beautiful lacquered um, inlaid wood. So this one's really easy to clean. So I, I've been using this one a lot lately. Um, this is my old punishment paddle that I am exclusively keeping for sentimental purposes. Um, I don't actually think it's that good a quality paddle anymore. I used to think it was wonderful because it was handmade and a hardwood, and it is, but it's, um, compared to some of the other artisans and craftsmen that make paddles, it's just kind of meh. Um, but it is mean as all get out, hard as hell, never gonna break, and important to me. Then I have a few little Miss Rose paddles. This was an old Miss Rose paddle that I had that broke that she then remade for me into a little, to a little guy. Um, and then, then I have another tulip wood one of hers because I have basically a collection of pink paddles. And then another small one from her. And yet another <laughs> small one from her. I love this one because it's really light. This one's super fun. I really, really love this one. Um, if I was, oh, I actually, I have two of them. This one's also tulip wood. 
If I were getting one of these, I would get a thin, I would get one like this. I would get this one again. This is my favorite, I think, of these little tiny guys. I might have a problem. Miss Rose, I just love her stuff. I love her. I love everything about them. And you know what? I have five of them. <laughs> and I'm keeping all of them. Um, and then this was a gift from a client, so I will be keeping that. And then lastly, let's just go this guy. I will give you the brief story of this guy. Um, so this was made by El Guapo, I'm pretty sure. Yes, I can tell because it's got his mustache, mustachioed mark. Um, he is a paddle maker out of Texas who has done some absolutely stunning work. I don't actually... Oh, there was a paddle I thought about buying and didn't a few years back that I kind of regret not buying. It was absolutely stunning. Um, and my former partner, Steve, who runs Tasks with me, had this made for us. So any of you who watch Jillian's videos might have seen in the discussion uh, of favorite implements when Dan explained the saga slash tragedy that was Vic Stephen Lewis's weighted hairbrush. I have a funny story about a, uh, a hairbrush, actually. A couple of years ago, we were on a road trip with Princess Kelly May and her fiance, Stephen Lewis. <laughs> Kelly and Stephen brought with them on this road trip a hairbrush that was special because the back of it was full of like little metal balls. Yeah, full bearings. You couldn't really hear them rolling around in the hairbrush, but they made it really heavy, really yeah. stingy, really uh, deadly. Great. Somehow on this road trip, this hairbrush disappeared. And to this day, no one knows. I think they think we stole it. We didn't steal it. You know, I didn't steal it. Oh yeah, that's true. I didn't steal it either. <laughs> I have my trusty hairbrush. Dan is sus. But anyway, so uh, Steve had loved that brush and loved, knew that I was getting hit with it and that made him joy. So he tried to have it replicated basically. Um, so I have a few of the different attempts of him getting things custom made for us to replicate that. This one is literally a weapon. It weighs like five pounds. I would basically never hit anyone with this as a spanking implement. I would use it as a self-defense tool. Um, I mean, you could like tap on someone, I guess, with it. And, uh, but I keep it because it's a good story and it's a gift from someone I care about. This is a terrible setup. I need a better setup. Okay, so that setup wasn't really working for me. So we are switching it up. Uh, hopefully I will like this better. And we are going to move to leather paddles slash sensation paddles which is my smallest implement collection and i actually know just looking at them that i'm not getting rid of any of them <laughs> so we'll talk about them all right so this is vix and it is my like one of my favorites it's actually one of the old northern um paddles from northern spanking videos because it's great for videos because it has a mean side and a nice side and this padded side is absolutely spectacular um it's actually by quality control it says 15 and I don't know if they still sell it, um, but if they do, would highly recommend just for sheer yumminess. Love that paddle. Um, and then I have a couple, I have three by Leatherthorn, um, who I've mentioned is very difficult to track to. Oh no, sorry, this one's Leatherthorn. Um, you can tell because it's got the indentations. Love that one. This one, I will have to look up the manufacturer of um, came to TASP a few years back, is hard to track down. But this one, similarly, a really nice thing you can get with leather paddle is a hard side and a soft side. So I like this one. And then this one's pink and I like it. So we're keeping both of those. Um, this is an Ouch UK paddle. Um, it's lovely and I will keep it because again, I don't have very many leather paddles, but it is a little floppy and kind of hard to control in reality. Um, so not my favorite, but I do love them and I love a lot of their stuff and that one works well. And then this is not leather, but it is miscellaneous and absolutely spectacular. It is sensualpaddles.com. Guys, brand, if you make paddles, brand your stuff. If you make implements, brand your stuff. Um, it is like, it's 
some sort of ash or birch, very, very light, maybe even like a plywood type particle board on one side and foam on the other. The foam is just thud. It feels like basically nothing. It is just thud on the side and all sitting on the side. And it's super fun when you're spanking to just all of a sudden, if you're going like this, all of a sudden flip it over and do a stingy one. Super stingy, super thuddy, all in one. Not at all head spacey, but really, really fun to play with. I, I use this one a lot. Okay, let's do next to me. We've got large paddles. <laughs> so I called this video Marie Kondoing my stash, but I don't actually think I'm gonna Marie Kondo much. I think it's just gonna be mostly a tour because I can't think I'm getting, I don't think I'm getting into any of these either. <laughs> okay, so let's start easy. Mine, ones I made. The Omega Tau Kappa paddles. I made these. Uh, 10 years ago, I shot a set of videos that sadly cannot be released because one of the girls that was in it um, sadly got outed and has asked to have her videos removed, um, which is fair enough So for her safety. So we have removed those videos, but it was uh, included 10 Emirat, Christy Cutie, and Casey Calvert. Uh, and it was a sorority initiation scene, which is where Omega Tau Kappa began. Um, I never actually used this one. It's just very light. Um, this is the one I, I often travel with and will play with if I'm playing with some, want, somebody wants to do a sorority scene. Um, people have, some people have signed it on the back. Uh, but yeah, so I love these, but you will sometimes, I realized, see some flecks of white paint on some of my other implements. And it is because this one traveled in my kit bag for years as like a stability thing, if nothing else, because uh, it was, it's so sturdy. <laughs> and um, I'm pretty sure this is actually an, a vintage paddle, like not a, not like really vintage, but um, like this is an actual old frat paddle that I got and defaced basically. But yes, so my Omega Tau Kappa paddles, they will never go. This paddle is so beautiful. I could not buy it, but then I forgot that I owned it. And Vic just pulled it out. And now I feel a bit bad. <laughs> I love this paddle, it's so beautiful. It is by the same manufacturers as that inlay uh, hand paddle that I have. I have no justification for this paddle other than it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning and I, it's just pretty and it brings me joy. It brings me joy. We'll go with this. My white paint speckles. Oh, my mistress. This lives with that. Uh, this is my other, t my second in my tulip wood collection. So this one's all of the pink bits. Doesn't have any of the white on it really. Um, love it. Sentimental value as well. Everything Miss Rose makes. I will never, I will never part with them. People like to say that Miss Rose makes the meanest paddles and that is not true. She makes all of the paddles. <laughs> Some of her battles are very, very mean. Um, it depends on the density of the wood. But I don't use this paddle a lot, I'll be honest, but I love it. This is an actual vintage school paddle um, that has been duct taped or gaffer taped if you're British back together and glued back together. It has been signed by people. Um, it is exclusively for having and for showing. It is a show and tell piece. I do not use it um, for play. There are a few pieces actually that are around the house that I, I didn't bring down here, like my razor strop and uh, brush set that hangs up in our guest room, our <laughs> carpet beater that hangs in our entryway. I have implements as decor um, and those will stay. So this doesn't live as decor, but it lives in my toy bag basically as decor. All right, so in my video that I made about your my the 10 implements that I would have, you saw this guy and I mentioned its sibling. Uh, this is my other, my tulip wood collection from Miss Rose. Um, I adore this paddle. It is, you might've seen it also, I, I uh, did a scene with Pandora Blake uh, for Dreams of Spanking. 
uh, there was a, um, an employee a boss scene and you can see me just kind of barely tap and they go kind of flying into the wall. So it's a beast and I love it. Would recommend. And then I also showed this in that um, top 10 video. This is my vintage sorority paddle. So I really, if I'm traveling, will, or if I'm kind of putting together my toy bag, I usually bring these three, kind of a light, a medium, and a heavy for anybody who wants to play with paddles. But if I'm actually doing a proper like bent over swing, I will almost never use the heavy one. I'm always using the lighter ones because I don't like swinging them. I don't feel like my wrist has that sort of strength and uh, it doesn't like feel well in my hands. So that's me. But so yeah, so keeping all of those. Oh, I forgot this one in my large paddles or this one got set between my large and small paddles. So this is by the wonderful Clarine Klein. I don't actually know if she uses a different name for uh, or if she's still making implements, if she uses a different name, that is her writing name. She's incredibly multi-talented. I love this paddle. Um, I've been filming with it lately and it is like the perfect, you can actually use this OTK, just, but it's a two cheek OTK, which is the rarest thing in the absolute world. It fits your hand. It is well shaped to fit um, a smaller hand like mine. And I just love this paddle. All right, let's very quickly do crops. Um, I am keeping all of these. I only have four and I culled them in a recent year. I know, I remember I had a set of short green craft ones that I know I donated to a silent auction before. Um, those were really great. <laughs> Whoever bought those, those were great. So we have a uh, proper, is this outro London Tanners? This is London Tanners. So we have a proper London Tanners one, mean as heck but aesthetic and lovely. Writing crops are really just for aesthetics, um, which is why I have this one, which is from a sex shop from years ago. It is not great. It's not even leather. I'm pretty sure it's rubber, but it, it, it does the job. And again, it's aesthetic. And then two actual tack shop ones, one of which, which is this, uh, which I love. I cannot get the price tag that was stuck on it off. Very frustrating, but it is wonderful. It is super soft. It's got a big head. So like if I were to actually want to use a crop for like sensation, I would use this one. And then this one is a proper, like proper traditional tack crop. Um, get them for five bucks. If you like to do sensation play, having a matching set of crops is excellent, um, which is why I originally had that match set, except for I uh, might have said in another video, I might've explained. My left hand is just for show. I cannot do drumming based, sensation based things, two handed things. My left hand cannot keep up, so uh, I, I only have one thing left that's a match set. Otherwise, I just accept that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a one-offer. So yeah, so those are my crops. All right, another one that I don't have a lot of, which actually surprises me, um, which means I have at some point done a call slash all of my other spoons have ended up as kitchen spoons. <laughs> Just spoons, I only have four and I am keeping all of them. Um, this is actually a great spoon for anybody looking to buy one uh, nowadays. This one, I don't know who it's by. It was a gift um, or where it came from, but it is wonderful if you see one that looks like this it's really solid it's not going to break it's very similar to my old school original one really like those um i actually don't use mine as much a lot of times because it has my name on it it doesn't work for the purposes of looking like a spoon <laughs> so when i need something to look like a spoon i use this one um the giant one that I mentioned in that Vic doesn't know where it's from, but is the best. And then this was a gift um, from some wonderful people and is very cool, sort of colorful spoon. Um, I just keep for decorative purposes. And to be fair, it's actually, I should use this. This packs a, that packs a punch. This is definitely solid wood. It is beautiful. I will use this one more. I forgot that I had that. 
good find. So yeah, that's my spoons. All right, so where this is gonna turn into an actual call is brushes. Um, brushes and novelty items. So I'm sure a few of you have experienced this, that you just buy brushes, spatulas, rulers, things like that, whenever you see them. Anytime you see something that you're like, oh, that could be used for spanking, no matter where you are. Um, and it's fun for a while until then you end up with a lot of things that you don't need. So we actually have some ones that I'm getting rid of here. So uh, they are exclusively cheap things that actually aren't very good for spanking. So I might just chuck them. Um, this one actually would be good for spanking, but I don't need it anymore. So this is a like horsehair, this was a shoe brush. Um, to be fair, I could actually use this to use as a shoe brush. <laughs> And I remember when I saw this in a shop and was like, oh my God, that could be a paddle. So I probably actually had this for a decade, uh, but I will never use it. Um, this is a Conair brush that I got at a CVS hoping it would be good. It is not, or it's just not any better. It's about the same. They're similar, but I like my other ones better. So I don't, this one doesn't get any use, um, but it could get use. This one similar situation. Uh, it could work for somebody as sort of that pharmacy brush, but doesn't, I don't need it. So never use it. Um, and then this, I used to have a few of these, um, these sort of lollipop bath brush style brushes. Um, I was really into one of these at one point, like really, really into one of these, uh, that was longer. Man, I forgot about that. I think it was, I think it got lost to a different, I think it got lost in a relationship breakup. Um, but yeah, I never use these anymore. So uh, these can all go to a better home. This is a vintage piece that is not for spanking, <laughs> but it was the, uh, where I hang my razor strap. This is what originally hung there. It's part of that brush set. So it just exists. Um, I have this vintage brush that is absolutely on its last legs. Um, the bristles are almost entirely out. It was not in good shape when I got it and I have not taken the best care of it, but it is solid wood and wonderful. Um, it does not travel because the bristles break. Um, it's not really sturdy, but it is lovely, so I will keep it. Um, this is, I jokingly refer to the meanest thing in my toy bag. It is a Bakelite brush, and if you can get your hands on one of these, get it. It is absolutely super, super mean. It's basically like Lexan in that it's kind of a plasticky material. It burns after you hit with it because it sticks, it grips, it grips and pulls. Uh, absolutely lovely. Also not great to travel with because the bristles get smushed and destroyed. Um, but I actually do play with this one. I, I really love this one. I did not know we had this bath brush. I think this is Vicks bath brush. <laughs> Gonna keep it because it's a good bath brush. This is my current favorite bath brush. Adore, boots, 10 bucks, could not recommend more. Um, my two pharmacy hair brushes that I use the most, my vintage brush that I absolutely adore, and this is currently my current favorite vintage brush, it's a hat brush, um, I talked about it before. These are clothes brushes, vintage clothes brushes. Um, they are not cracked, you actually could use both of these still. Um, I don't because we have enough things that I can use, but I basically just collect vintage things now. So there's also two more of these hanging upstairs. Um, but finding ones that aren't cracked, these are actually relatively easy to find at vintage stores. Um, but they do crack kind of easily sometimes. So, but I can't be, I can't bear to part with vintage things. So all of those stay. And then this brush, um, back on the Dan is sus weighted hairbrush scandal. This was the, after the giant El Guapo paddle, um, Steve bought us this beautiful wooden hairbrush um, that is a bit small for Vic's hands, um, but we keep it by the bedside table and it hurts like heck. Um, I should use this more actually, it fits my hand perfectly, uh, but it is a sentimental, it's also just glorious, glorious. I believe he got it on Amazon. Oh, and last thing, uh, 
I have gotten rid of all of my other spatulas. I have done a good job, but this one says naughty and nice. I will keep my occasional novelty piece. Also a novelty. Actually, I kind of need an offset spatula to cook with. I feel like I should maybe transition this to a kitchen utensil. But it's very good for like little spots. Hmm. But I have other things that go in little spots. I think this is gonna move to the kitchen. I need to get rid of this. It's broken. It's just decoration now. Um, and then these guys. So uh, these are really fun um, because if you, <laughs> if you use them on cold skin from cold, they sting like the Dickens. Um, literally after five swaps, they do not hurt anymore. <laughs> But um, they are really fun to like bet with people to like be like, oh, I bet this wouldn't hurt and to make people feel very silly because they're getting hit with Frozen and Minnie Mouse things. Uh, so yeah, these are paddle ball paddles. Wouldn't go out and hunt for them, but they're fun and I keep them. Um, and then we have a singular ruler. <laughs> which is the first ladies of the United States that someone gave me. Um, this does not have rounded edges, so I would actually never use this um, for spanking. I actually might need to put this somewhere so that it doesn't get used for spanking accidentally because this is very sharp. It's a very fun idea, but be careful with rulers because they can be sharp. Speaking of rulers, let's do some long implements. Uh, so should have probably gone in the long paddle category. This is a Miss, another Miss Rose paddle. This is top three favorite Miss Rose item. I adore it. It is a ruler paddle. It is thin. It is stingy. It is hard and just, it's glorious. Um, this was made by an ex-boyfriend. Um, it's not the greatest quality <laughs> of craftsmanship, but it's not bad. I don't really use it, but I like to travel with it because I put it in my bag and it's me. Um, <laughs> ah, this needs to go in the trash. Um, this was Vix. It says, teach me a lesson. It is clever, but it is cracked and needs to be reminded that it, remember that it's cracked. This one was also Vix and is broken and should have never been used for spanking to begin with, in my opinion, because it has the metal edge. You should always remove the metal edge first. Um, so no, these both, these are both trash because they are broken. But no fear, I have a proper meter stick uh, from a friend in uh, Texas who <laughs> uses them in his classroom to like bang against the, the, the chalkboard to get people's attention. <laughs> and so it breaks, they break sometimes and then he lets people have them. So this was broken at, at nine. So it's, it's not quite a meter it's, or a yard. It's a, it's too short. Um, but it is heavy and good and hefty. Um, this is a paint stick that I don't really need anymore. Um, it says Brat and they're stingy, but I have a lot of implements and I don't really use this one. So I think this one's also gonna get given away. Oh my God, and I love this. This is from Miss Rose. It says this is six inches and it is a little ruler and it's got a nice grip and it's mean and fun and good for small places. So that's all of those. Okay, I think we've finished wood. <laughs> Gotten through the wood. Let's talk leather. Um, I might actually have some stuff in here to get rid of too. Leather is my favorite. As many of you know, I'm hashtag team leather, but um, I do have some stuff in here that I don't need anymore. And I do kind of use the same like five things. <laughs> So ones I know I'm keeping that I have talked about before and I will not go into in depth, Chad paddle strap, domestic discipline strap. Um, my nice saddle strap, my mean saddle strap. Miss Chris actually sells um, ones like this at the moment and would recommend this. I think this one actually might be from Miss Chris. Um, we took off the metal decoration bit um, just because it works better for me for how I like to use it. But 
highly recommend. They're mean as heck. Um, but yeah, so I travel with these four always. These are the four that I use. I could almost certainly get rid of every single other thing and be fine, but I won't. Um, then we've got belt strap from London Tanners. Uh, this was Vix. It's very stingy and heavy, but I would not get rid of it. This is one of my most prized possessions. I would be stop traveling with it because I would be so devastated if I lost it. Um, it is one of the original London Tanners straps, um, back when they used the soft leather. I had the domestic discipline strap in this leather, but it is there with X's. It's fine. I'm not bitter about it, but this is actually one of the original Crimson Moon straps and one of the founders of Crimson Moon, Mike Billa, gave it to me. Um, he used it on me in a video and I was obsessed with it because it is the nicest strap in the whole world, but incredibly difficult to use. It's so long and so floppy. I am not really tall enough to use it. I can never really get enough velocity going to kind of get it to land straight like I can, but, um, and it's got this wooden handle. It's very different from their stuff that they make now. It's quite a bit longer. It's so, so soft. And, um, there were three of these made, apparently one for each of the founders of Crimson Moon, and I ended up with one of them. Uh, Mike, I don't know why you gave this to me, but I cherish it. And as the self-appointed Spanko historian, I, I absolutely cherish this. Okay, so then I've got some Tawses. This is our London Tanner's Taws. It's a two fork Taws um, bought in the last couple of years. And it is our personal one. He got it for our anniversary. Um, and in reality, it actually needs a bit of a, a beveling on the inside if I'm if I'm being honest um, so we use the other one more and I'm not a leather fixer so I cannot adjust that really very well but when I'm back in Texas I will get someone who knows what they're doing to adjust that for me because this one means a lot to me um, ouch UK also makes amazing leather goods amazing 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 stuff um, and I love the taws that I have from them um, this is a two fork Taz. It's a little bit hard to wield sometimes, but it is probably the meanest thing I own. And then I have a Buffalo hide one that is just heavy and thuddy and wonderful. Also from Ouch UK um, that I hunted down. We have a small, oh, this is also Ouch UK. Um, a little hand Taz, which is wonderful. Um, hitting hands is actually really dangerous. You can F things up if you hit wrists. So getting things specifically for hands is usually a good idea. Um, love that one. I mentioned this one, so it goes over here. So this is an old um, Kaniac uh, strap that I am gonna get rid of. I got this in actually the Bottoms Up Christmas uh, exchange probably nine or 10 years ago. It was one of my first implements. I love this strap, if I'm being honest. It is incredibly soft, incredibly easy to use, like genuinely a great strap. Um, but I don't love the look of it. I, if I'm being honest, I don't always love the look of Kaniac things. Um, but that said, they are incredibly user-friendly, very good for beginners, great price point. Um, like would recommend this strap for sure. It's the strap that I learned to use when I learned to strap. Um, so this is how I learned to strap was using this one. Uh, but it does not, it oddly does not hold a ton of sentimental attachment for me. And I have so many straps that I use and I feel like this could go to a better home and somebody else can learn how to strap using it. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna say thank you to this guy. It has been wonderful and a big part of my life, but it has served me well and it can serve another home. So this is a tack shop strap, a saddle strap, but it is stirrup leather, but I don't like it. I don't know why. It's kind of stiff, but in a weird way. And I, like it's good but I just never use it and I have a lot. <laughs> so I'm gonna let somebody else work this puppy in and break this in and it'll be a beautiful strap, I think. Okay, this is my six foot strap. It is just a giant length of tack leather. Um, 
that is glorious and I never use I never use it because because I'm not a really showy play I don't I'm a very showy player I'm not the showiest of tops in certain circumstances so I uh don't usually use like this sort of strap um when I'm topping and I certainly don't use it when I'm traveling because it's too big but I do love it as a bottom and it's fun as a top um and I could hypothetically make other implements out of it which is probably actually why I bought it um because it's really good quality leather I actually might make it I might, I might get some stuff made out of this because I adore it uh but yeah keeping keeping that one um and then I've got all of the random belts that I got for that belt video that I made for y'all um which I will keep because they also all just fit me as belts I think that's my feeling about all of my belts is if it fits me as a belt I will keep it um the only one that doesn't is my old belt but it is so it lives in my in my toy bag. It's not my favorite now. My favorite is over there, but um, <laughs> cause I was wearing jeans yesterday. Uh, but I will keep this one. And then last in the leather, this is a tiny little mini that I got from Miss Cress uh, recently. Haven't had a chance to use it much, um, but if you wanna make some mean marks on somebody's thighs, just be really, really sadistic. It's lovely. Oh, and then also just in the quick leather category, I do have um, another razor strop. This one actually is in good enough shape that I could use it, but I will be honest, I have not been taking great care of it and it's not, and it's turning into worse shape. Um, and so I don't really play with it. Uh, kind of this stays as a decoration piece. And then I have this giant piece of um, belly band saddle leather that is heavy and gorgeous and absolutely spectacular. I think this actually might've been like machinery leather um, from a, like a machinery belt and a client got it for me um, and then reconditioned it. So it is in good shape. Um, it's a little greasy still. I need to do a little bit more work on it, but this will also make an amazing, amazing implement. So. Um, those will get made into stuff. All right, sticks. We have a lot of sticks. And I feel very silly for saying that, I, that we need new sticks, but we do. So a lot of these are going to go into a pile that will be giveaway when we acquire new sticks, but for now we shall keep. So I'll start with the easy keep ones. This is my princess cane. I adore it. It is pretty much useless for playing with, but it is filled with pink glitter and it has a pink top and it is my swagger stick. It's my personal swagger stick. Speaking of swagger sticks, we do have a beautiful vintage swagger stick um, from the military. I think this one is Navy, the British Navy and it lives in our umbrella stand and it's absolutely spectacularly beautiful. Um, it is slightly cracked, like it's not cracked, but we like wanting to play with it. It's in good enough shape you hypothetically could play with it, but then we noticed one of the knots is sort of starting to split and we didn't want to risk it. So it is just decorative, but gosh, is it pretty. Um, so yeah, those are our swagger sticks. We have two crackers um, from Miss Rose. One is longer, one is shorter. These are a totally different implement than most because they're a cane shape, but they're made of wood. So they feel totally different. Um, do not think that these are canes. They are not, they are different. Their handles are awesome also, by the way. these like, they're great. Um, yeah, so it's a different sensation. It's nice to have one. We have two, happy about it. Um, these are my percussion canes. They're from Prism, which is no longer a business, which is really sad because I loved Prism canes. They were out of Texas. Um, these are one of the first things I ever bought as an implement. I never use them at the moment. They live in my toy bag 
because I have a roll toy bag and um, I've always had them in there and nothing has ever happened to my toy bag. And part of me is convinced that that is because these are providing stability for that. <laughs> I have no idea if that's true. Like no, no evidence to suggest whether that's true or not, except for the fact that they have always been in there and nothing bad has ever happened. So they stay. <laughs> All right. Um, I have two sets of birches. I really love these, have not used them in a very long time. They used to live in my toy bag because I like them as a bottom a lot. Um, but I very rarely have use for them as a top. So I don't travel with them um, usually, but they are, if I'm being honest, I cannot remember who either, which ones are by, I think this one's by Mac, Mr. Mac. Uh, I know I got both of them at TASP and Steve is gonna yell at me. Um, these ones are sealed. They have coated tips. You could hit someone hard with these, but you don't need to. This one, um, you keep a band around and it's like a basically like a thud machine or you pull it down and it opens up and it's the loose ones. Um, they are different than a birch, like a traditional birch. If you made one out of switches, that's gonna like cut and sting and be a whole thing. And it's wonderful, different. These are highly sensation based. Um, I like sensation plays at bottom. So I will keep them because they are different. All right, so. Speaking of different, we have a loopy Johnny that is a cane. This is definitely not mine. Um, it's also kind of falling apart. That needs to get fixed. Uh, I've never used this. I don't know why you would ever use this, but I bet it's mean as heck because loopy Johnnies are mean and canes are mean. So I feel like if you put it together, but it's so big, I don't know how you would ever hit properly with that. But it's not mine, so we're keeping it. Okay, so I have a couple like showy canes. Okay, I'm gonna try to finish this quickly because my battery's dying. A um, couple showy canes that are hook crooked, hook candled. This one's really whippy. I never use it, but I like having it. This one's way too thick and knobby, um, but they are fun to have around and to threaten people with. And then we have a giant Singapore, uh, a traditional Singapore judicial cane that is terrifying, um, but beautiful. And to be fair, actually the same as my percussive sticks. So I could use those as Singapore sticks. Um, it's gorgeous, unique, would never get rid of. Um, and then we have its younger brother, which is my favorite cane to top with at the moment. Absolutely love. This is some cheap random thing that I bought at some point. This is definitely going away. Um, this I love, but is, has seen better days. Uh, when we get replacements, this will get replaced. This will get replaced. <laughs> this will get replaced. And maybe this one, I love, we love all of these, these are the ones we use the most, but in reality, um, I love the handles on these. They either need to go, go get repaired, particularly this one and this one, um, or, or move on. Um, but they are beautiful. All different weights, all different sizes. This is a random misery stick that I've got. It is, uh, coated metal, I think. It's mean as heck. Not a spanko -y thing, but lovely to have around. This is another random, random whippy cane that I have no idea where I got. It's just a stick. We have so many random canes. And then just another thicker stick. I mean, we're gonna keep all of those if I'm being honest. And I've got a pile of floggers back there that I'm just not going to go through. So in reality, I got rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I got rid of eight implements. I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a hobby. Bottoms, collect your own implements. Don't buy them for your tops. Get them for yourselves. You deserve them. Don't lose them in breakups. Have your own collection. Ladies, in general. Top, bottom, switch, whatever. Get your own implements. 
I'm fairly certain that I have one of the largest collections from ladies in the scene, and that is a shame. We should not be, should not be a men's only game. Get you some. I will try to link down below as much as I can where some of these things came from. Um, and thank you to everyone that is watching and supports and thanks to everyone who makes these wonderful items or sources them um, and acquires them so that we can play with them. And you know what? In Marie Kondo, this did bring me lots of joy. <laughs> Until next time, class dismissed. I can't tell if this is like a really off-putting angle or really cute. Who knows? What I'm looking for is something... I need to shut the door now. <laughs> Storm's coming in, dude. <laughs> Please don't st we don't take great care of our implements also. Please do as I say, not as I do. In terms of your storage and care. The well, fact yeah. that daddy just stepped well, on our fucking canes. Well, of course, in, in an ideal world, you don't leave your shit lying around on the floor. Do you? So particular. But someone with very big feet. Okay.